What's up everyone, China Cycling here with a bit of a quick and dirty video for you today because I'm not sure how many people will be interested in this, but I think this is very cool. So, as you can see, this is like one of my big rocks. I've got three of these things, as you know. But as you see, it looks like a pretty normal road bike, especially at first glance. But then when you start to look at the water bottles, you see that's a bit of a strange looking water bottle. Is it a toolbox or something? But then when you look at the rear hub, boom, that's where you see it. So today we're looking at this, the Evigors e-bike conversion kit. So this thing consists of uh, a set of wheels. So they've got carbon rims front and rear. Uh, the front wheel is basically just a normal carbon wheel, whereas the rear wheel is where the magic is at with this huge uh, e-bike motor. Uh, other than that, here we've got the battery. So this is a huge battery that mounts onto your, your water bottle bracket bolts. And there's a nice little simple thing to put in there and adjust the height of it and stuff like that. And at the front, we have uh, basically the little controller unit where you can choose the resistance level and all stuff like that. So yeah, we'll keep it on five because that's where the power is at. Uh, but yeah, so this is really cool. So there's lots of things on the market these days or coming to the market these days about you know, how to convert your bike into an e-bike, etc., etc. Uh, but some of them, you know, some of them look a bit ghetto or some of them don't have enough power uh, or some of them seem to be designed more for commuters rather than cyclists. Whereas this one, it's more designed at kind of like, you know, your hardcore bike nerds, your geeks and stuff like that. So today, not a review, just like my first impressions, a quick look kind of video. Uh, talk you through what I think of it, the pros and the cons of my first few rides, etc, etc. So first of all, who do I think this is for? Like I said, I think it's for like bike nerds, bike geeks, uh, people who, you know, love their bike tech and stuff. But also it's obviously for, you know, if you want to do some rides in your house and you've got, you know, like a husband and wife and uh, maybe the husband's quicker than the wife or maybe the wife's quicker than the husband and you need, you want to be able to ride together and especially up hills, one of your struggles, then this is a very cool option. Because obviously this can just bolt onto your existing road bike, a uh, disc brake road bike, no problem. And uh, yeah, you're good to go, basically. And, and trust me, once you've got this on, even the like slowest person can drop the fastest of people. Um, I did a few rides on this and, you know, just for fun, uh, just some Strava KOMs. And like I say, I've got flat pedals, flat pedals in there. I had my backpack on there. I just finished work. And I took the KOMs off, guys, with 6 watts per kilo. Obviously, as soon as I got the KOMs, I then converted the ride to an e-bike ride because we don't do cheating on Strava. Uh, but it is a cool little conversion kit. And like I say, the slowest people will be able to keep up with the fastest people. So installation is pretty easy. So like I say, first take your old wheels off and then put your tires and your rotors and your concerts and everything on these wheels as you would with a normal wheel set. Uh, and then like I say, the rear wheel is where the magic is at. So on this side, we can see my lazy cable management. It does come with nice clips and stuff to like clip the cables to your bike, but I'm lazy, so I just use zip ties, excuse me. Uh, but yeah, so there's a cable that comes out of the rear hub motor and then connects to the main uh, battery here. And then and another cable that goes up to the head unit. Uh, in the future, there'll be a version without the, without the head unit up front. So you will get rid of this wire. And so that'll look a lot neater. And then all the information you'll need will be on some LEDs on here. So I think that'll be a cool option as well. But for this version, uh, all of the controls, turning it on and off and stuff is all up here. Uh, so there's also two versions of the battery. This is the water bottle battery version, but there's also a saddlebag version where you get a bit of a chunky saddlebag up there, which holds a battery in it as well. And uh, me personally, I think I kind of like this water bottle option. Um, you know, it looks a bit more sleek. There's less wires running up and down the bike. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. So yeah, literally change your tires and rotors over to the new wheels, put these wheels on, uh, install a little bracket for the uh, water bottle battery and then put the water bottle battery on there too. Uh, the head unit also super easy to install, just a couple of bolts to put it on here. Uh, obviously, if you have got a traditional garment mount, it might get in the way, so I might have to take that off. But, you know, this has all the information you need anyway. For me, I'm just recording the rides on my watch. So yeah, fair enough, whatever. But like I say, when they do have the version without this, you'll be able to put your garment there or whatever anyway. Also, can we just take a moment to appreciate the weather in Shama today? So it's super hot, super hot, so hardly anyone's out, but that is some nice weather. So, pros and cons of the system. I think let's talk about the pros first. Uh, I think the biggest pro for me is just, like, how stealthy this looks. Like, okay, you're not going to get into, like, <laughs> a world tour race on it without the USDI noticing, but... You know, if we're just riding along, uh, if, you, if this passed you and you just had a quick look down, you would not notice this was an e-bike at all. 
Uh, obviously, there's you know people have egos, people have pride and stuff. So having something that's more subtle uh, is is always good. But also, you know, just it's a nice looking bike. Like at first glance, this thing you, you know you can't really see it's an e-bike. And me personally, I think it's looking really clean and tidy. So for me, that's the number one advantage. Uh, second advantage is just the power. So again, this isn't a technical review. Uh, I'm just going into the uh, what my ride feelings are. But for me, this thing is super powerful. Like, so there's five different levels. Basically, on level one, it just feels like a normal bike. So the e motor is just doing enough work to like get over it, the disadvantage of its weight and stuff. But anything above level one, it just starts getting uh, yeah crazy. So, like I said, uh, Strava KMs on this, no problem. But for just cruising around, uh, yeah, doing 30 k's an hour. So I have a power meter on this bike, so I can see what power I'm doing. And like 30 k's an hour, I think it's kind of like a normal cruising speed for most cyclists. And for me to do 30 k's an hour on this, uh, in resistance mode 5, I think I was doing about 60 watts. So, you know, absolutely just breathing on the pedals, basically. Um, this version is actually not speed limited at all. There's no speed re restrictions. And uh, I was giving it the beans a bit just, and it seems to be able to do about 45, 46 k's an hour is what it can give you resist uh, help up to. After 46 k an hour, like, uh, yeah, you're more or less on your own. But 46 k's an hour, uh, if you're going faster than that, then you probably shouldn't be doing that on open roads anyway. So, yeah, that is what it is. Uh, battery life, I've not worn the battery life down yet. Uh, so at the moment on this one, I've got uh, 26 k's on this trip since the last charge. And it says I've got full battery. Uh, when I do start pedaling, that goes down to three bars. So I guess it's probably more like three bars. All of these things, the claimed ranges and stuff, like always taken with a huge grain of salt because uh, you don't know the weight of the ride there. You don't know how hilly it was. And also because you can do work yourself, you have no idea how much work you're doing too. But from what I hear, if you've got it on like level two or three and you're just cruising around, you doing about half the work, it doing half the work, I think the quoted range is like 80, 90 kilometers. Uh, if you're going to be attacking a KOM, uh, I think the guy told me when he was testing it, like he did like a, a 15 kilometer climb and he went all out. And uh, I think it used about half of the battery. So like you're going to have a huge difference depending on the kind of uh, riding and stuff you're doing. But yeah, enough to do, you know, 80k loop i think is enough for most people who are going to be using something like this and then the other thing i like about it is even when it is out of power or you do turn it off it rides fine like especially on the flats once you go in you'd be hard pressed to know that it's an e-bike and you've got very little punishment for carrying around the battery so speaking of that the weight of the system uh, this bike before i put these wheels on before i put this kit on this was around about a seven kilo bike and that was with super lightweight crw wheels with this kit on now, we're about 11 kilos. So the kit has basically added four kilos. So you can do the math there, work out how heavy your road bike is now, add four kilos to it, and that's basically what's going to be. But if you compare that to e-bikes on the market, that's obviously super competitive. Uh, if you do want more range and you don't mind uh, the weight sacrifice, then you can put a saddlebag battery on there as well. Have the two batteries. Or if you, if you want to do without water bottles, you could put two water bottle batteries on there too etc etc so there's lots of customization you can do and stuff like that another pro of this system i think was just the power delivery so i've used lots of systems like this before i think i've used like three or four of these like e-bike conversion kits uh some of them you have to put like you know put magnets on your cranks or magnet on the rear wheel or like they have to have torque sensors on them this one none of that uh, the way it's doing it is it's sensing the torque that you're putting through the cassette in the hub and uh, the power delivery is super smooth. So obviously it's going to depend on which mode you're on, one, two, five. But basically when you start pedaling, the way it puts the power in is super smooth. It's not jerky. Lots of the systems I've tried before have been really jerky where, you know, you press on the pedals pretty hard. There's nothing, nothing, nothing. And it just goes, Rawr. this one doesn't do that. Like you start, as soon as you start pressing on the pedals, like an, an eighth of a pedal stroke, or whatever, it just slowly starts helping you and off you go. So uh, yeah, super impressive. I think that's probably the most uh, impressive thing about it when you compare it to other systems like this on the market uh yeah just the how it eases in and eases out the power is really smooth uh cons of the system or things i think could be a bit better uh, mostly small things uh, maybe yeah we'll start with the biggest thing the biggest thing i'd say is the rear wheel like it is built like a tank of a wheel so you can see how many spokes are in that thing and obviously you've got a huge flange on there this rear wheel is a tank uh, now that's good and bad obviously it's good because it's delivering big torque big power so it needs to be built by a tank to deliver that power smoothly 
but the con of it is that the ride quality on the back is a super rough ride. Now, if you do get one of these, I definitely recommend putting fat tires on it and dropping the pressure down, and that'll get rid of that problem right away, but it is something that you guys need to know. This rear wheel is a tank of a rear wheel wheel. There is, like, basically no compliance, and so all your compliance is going to be coming from your tire, so make sure you put a big tire on that. Uh, I've got a 25 on there at the minute. I had a 28 on it before. The 28 at, like, 40, 50 PSI was super nice. Uh, these are tubeless compatible as well, so you can set them up tubeless, which will, you know, then you can drop even lower pressures. But now I've got a 25 on there at like 90 PSI, and yeah, it rides hard. Again, it's one of those problems that's not a problem because you can just put a bigger tire in there. But if you're running a frame that only has clearance from 25s, that might be an issue for you. But other cons is maybe smaller stuff. Uh, like at the moment to turn the system on, you first have to press this power button here to turn the battery on, and then press this button here to turn like the system on. Uh, I think, you know, having two on and off switches is a bit redundant. It would be a lot nicer if it was just one switch to turn it on and off. Uh, like I say, they're working on a version that doesn't have the control unit on the front, so then it will just do one switch to turn it on and off. So, again, they seem to be one step ahead of me. It is a very cool system. There are lots of small quirks and stuff, but like I say, this is just an overview video that I'm going for. Uh, the system does come with disc rotors too, because these wheels use uh, six-bolt rotors, and so it comes with these rotors. Uh, front and rear rotors are actually 160 mil because of the size of the flange at the back you can't run 140 mil rotors you have to run 160 mil rotors so yeah we've got 160 mil rotors in there but yeah you guys let me know what you think have i lost the plot thinking this is cool or is this pretty cool i don't know um yeah i'm gonna keep playing around with this for a few more days and like i say uh, maybe i'll do a full review if there's enough interest but if not if you do want to learn more go to everygores.com uh i'll put a link in the description below Full disclosure, this video not a sponsored video, not a paid video, I didn't get any money. Uh, the boss of Evigors is one of my friends, so that's, you know, worth what it's worth. But yeah, full disclosure, I take everything with a pinch of salt, but link, link in the description down below. Uh, these guys are actually at Eurobike 2 this week, so if you're at Eurobike, if you're watching this now, you can go check them out at Eurobike. And again, I'll put their hall number, their booth number in the description down below. So yeah, super quick video today. Hope you liked it, and uh, yeah, keep going. China Cycling, out. Okay, nothing ever looks steep on camera, but this is pretty steep, like 20% 20, 20 pretty short of me. Well, let me just, uh, demonstration. So yeah, that was like zero effort by me, and straight up at like 22, 25 k's an hour.